Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 118. This episode is the first three-peat. In almost 120 episodes, our first three-peat had to be Derek Arnold and Tom Wilton. That's right, they are back, and Tom and Derek truly are some of my favorite people in the whole world. They're friends that I've made through this show over all the years, and it is always super fun to hang out and chat with them. We just really connected And uh, we haven't talked in two years. Uh, It's been two years since they came on last. So uh, it was great to finally catch up with them, which is exactly what we do. Uh, We catch up, we talk about life, what that's been been, uh, turned into now, now that we're all in quarantine and lockdown. Uh, In the meantime, Derek had a kid, so that was pretty cool. We talk about that. We talk about uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which we weren't able to talk about last time they were on because I hadn't seen it yet. Uh, We talk about the State of the Drive-In, which is uh, their YouTube series that I highly recommend, The Drive-In with Tom and Derek. Check it out. Uh, We talk about filming episode nine. Uh, Tom actually got to play Aftab Akbar in this one, which was super cool. We talk about uh, Derek got to wear prosthetics this time, so that's really cool. We talk about the power that an onset optometrist has. Uh, We talked about being there uh, together on the first day of episode seven and on the last day of episode nine and how cool that is to kind of put a bow on the entire experience of filming all these movies. Uh, we talk about them sharing a hug in the middle of the celebration scene in episode nine, Derek's favorite story from Jordan, working on the dark crystal. Uh, Tom actually wrote a book that he is reading on his YouTube channel. It is called Elf Lock. Check that out. It's very good. Uh, highly recommended if you're looking for, a a way to pass the time during your quarantine. And uh, another way to do that is to listen to this episode. So, without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 118, with my friends Derek Arnold and Tom Wilton. Theme song time. I was. Uh, I said to Libby the other day. I was like, I was like, gin at twelve thirty is fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Double digits in the in the clock. You're fine. As far as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. That's excellent. That's excellent work, Mr. Arnold. I'm yeah. impressed. <laughs> you know, at Castle Balance. That's that's kind of a late start, really. Yeah. I mean, I've. I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta start drinking, especially because the whole world is on holiday mode right now. That's what I'm saying. It's not we're not on holiday, Gary. <laughs> We're, we're on a global lockdown. This is not a ho- <laughs> this is this, this is the problem. Right, this is the problem. This is why the world is in the problem that it's in is because the Derek Arnolds of the world think this is a holiday. I mean, I you to be fair, you're out in the park just sunbathing. <laughs> yeah. The police having to tell you off, like you know, it, uh, it's just, you cease and desist from your sunbathing, please. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a public holiday. <laughs> I, to tell be you fair, what, glass half full. You know, I, I, li- I, went, I like the way Derek's attacking. It literally it. is. Yeah. <laughs> I I went gro- I, w- I left the house for the first time in like five days yesterday to, to go to the grocery store, right? Uh huh. And it was like one in the afternoon. I was like, I'm just I just need to get some veg stuff. You know, nothing really like important, important. Sure. And uh, I was walking down. I stopped and I looked down the toilet roll uh, aisle. Oh boy. And it, it was it was full. What? And I was like, I was like, what? Yeah. And so, but I was the only, it wasn't full. Like There were no people down the aisle. So it's almost like I stepped into the aisle expecting to like walk into an alternate universe. And there was like a moment where I'm just stood in this whole aisle. It's full of toilet roll. And I'm the only one there. I thought it was like, you've been framed or like, you know, candid camera. I'm like, <laughs> What's going on? And then this guy, he comes from the store. He comes with a whole other crate of toilet roll. And I was like, is, is this, is this, is this okay? <laughs> he was like, am I dead? He looked at me like I was ready. He's like, yeah, you take one if you need one. And I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I've been able to buy toilet roll in like two weeks. Yeah. Okay. You look at him like you're doing something wrong. 
<laughs> it was. And then I was like walking around the store all smug. I was like, yeah, that's right. I got toilet roll. Yeah. That's me. That's right. Like a, I got, living I like a king. <laughs> yeah. And then I went into the parking lot and I was like, well, I better hide this actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just put yeah, it yeah, under yeah, your yeah. shirt. I that. So about two, about two weeks ago. Um, yeah, I went to a supermarket and, and managed to pilfer a, a thing of toilet roll off a crate that was left in the middle of the store. And uh, I, had sa- I had the same, literally the same kind of, oh, well, first of all, I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to take this, but I'm going to take it anyway. Um, because at that point, there really wasn't any toilet roll in the stores. And then I had the same thing. Like, I went to the, the aisle to pay for it, the checkout aisle to pay for it. And then I was like, all the way back to the car, I had this really uneasy feeling like someone might mug me for my, for my toilet roll. <laughs> Crazy, crazy times, man. But I mean, the whole the whole world is in lockdown with wash your hands and be clean and be neat. And I'm going, welcome to my world. This is the way I've been living for 36 years. I always have hand sanitizer in the car at all times, all the time. I've always had hand sanitizer in the house and in my car. Always wash my hands. I don't share food with other people. Oh, it's just, Do you know what? Do you know what? I hadn't even thought about this. This is like your dream come true. You know, <laughs> yeah, because now you have to everyone's going to... You don't have to yes. speak to anybody. You're going to keep like three meter distance between you and the next person if you're out in the street. This is like your dream come true, isn't it? <laughs> it's mainly because everyone will now be on the same page as me. Right. That's that's what the wine is for. You're actually celebrating. <laughs> the world's come around. <laughs> the hard part that I've started to realize with it, I've had one or two people that I know that, you know, they're not like great friends, but like people that oh god i really hope they don't listen to this nah, I'm not <laughs> it's, it's okay like, nobody listens to this like, hey let's let's catch up and i'm going yeah cool and then in my head i'm like ah, oh, oh, i lit i don't have any excuse now i can't oh right i can't make an excuse of going oh i can't go out on on saturday night sorry man i really have to go home and look after the kid like it's it, it sucks because now i have to actually Go through and talk with people. Yeah, <laughs> you can't win them all. You know what I mean? There, there's got to be. You had an abundance of toilet paper, so you had it had to come clean somehow. <laughs> it's the law of equivalent exchange. If you want an abundance of toilet paper, you're gonna have yeah. to interact with people you don't want That's to. It. That's it. Yeah. I don't make the rules. Well, I, I, I will say this, Brian. Equal and positive reaction. You see? That's right. So, That's science. Is it positive? That's that science. Sure. Right there, I'll give it to you. We should start okay, our own science I'm not a science guy. Yeah. <laughs> I learned all um, about... Hey, listen, homeschool is an amazing thing. I, I, I learned all about inertia the other day. Oh. And don't ask me to tell you about it because I didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. You know, it involved a child and a wall, and I think I wrapped my head around it by the end. But That's it. We had a swing. Out. We had a swing, and, yeah. and we were <laughs> timing the frequency, and it was we had, we had a whole experiment going on. Um, things you learn. It's, it's yeah, and it's amazing. It's amazing how how you discover how easy it is to to lie to your children about the things that you don't understand. Oh yeah, yeah I know. Hey, I know all about inertia. <laughs> I can tell you. Let's let's do an experiment on this swing. <laughs> yeah, you just start pushing uh, your kids over. Okay, like, just cause <laughs> learn, <Yeah>. learn. <laughs> And then you get to quote Batman. Do you know why we fall? So we can pick ourselves <laughs> back up again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Brilliant. We so Brilliant. you guys right, right are right the, you guys are the first three peat I've had on my show. So congratulations. Boom. 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 It's worked out. I like it a lot. The oh. trifecta of awesome. That's right. That's right. And also, but it did it did take the world shutting down for us to get together finally. It did. Which yes. I'll be honest, it's selfish. Worth it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, I don't think the uh, the li- well the listeners should know this is what our fourth attempt to try and to try yeah. and schedule this. Like, I, because I stopped counting. <laughs> it was one time where I canceled about ten minutes before we were supposed to chat because I was in a rehearsal. In Pinewood going. I'm not going to leave. I'm, there's no way I'm going to make it home in ten minutes. Yeah. Tom then had to cancel because of the same thing. Essentially, work just sort of jumped. Yeah. Out of nowhere, work just yeah. sort of took us by the throat. Mm-hmm. And then I canceled just for fun. So it's like, you know, we got this banter. <laughs> <laughs> it was a kind of retribution thing. You yeah, like, you get well, it. If you guys are going to cancel. I'm going to have my fun too. Yeah, I was like, that sounds like fun. Let's just try it out. And yeah. you're right. <laughs> but so we, let's see, the last time we caught up was 
last year? Because it was right when uh, The Last Jurassic World came out. Because I remember yeah, I, I hadn't, hadn't seen, seen it. it yet. Exactly. And me and Tom were catching a flight to go to Helsinki for the weekend. Yep. Just for a lad's, little lad's holiday. We went to Helsinki. We left after our conversation, Tom, and went right to the airport and grabbed a plane to go to Helsinki and hang out for the weekend. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was that's... June-ish. It was summertime. It was the summer solstice, right in June. But that's, but that's, that's not last June. That's the June before, right? Was it? Oh, it <laughs> yeah, what have been? Yeah, 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 it's two years because last June Kit was born. What? Yeah. Two years already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's, oh, yeah, it was two years that's ago. That's the last time we spoke. That was... What? Yeah. We all look so was, different. Yeah, that was definitely... That was, 20, that was 2018, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So how have you guys nice. been? <laughs> well... <laughs> it's been so long. The world's on so fire. Long. And it was all going so well until yeah. all of a sudden the world went to pieces. I know. Um, Oh, yeah, we were, it's, it's, it's really, really strange, crazy times. It Both is. Derek and I were attached to different projects. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we started to hear about all of the all of the craziness going on. And then we were starting to hear all these rumors circulating amongst the different film productions about, you know, potential hiatus. And then obviously things got worse and worse and worse. And these potential hiatuses became real hiatuses and then it was suddenly it was an indefinite hiatus yeah I'm like that's it we're shut and shop and we don't honestly know when we're going to be opening back up again um, yeah I, that's everything and <laughs> everything is shut down we're in lockdown we're in full lockdown mode Jeez. you know this is going to be a hell of a story to tell when it's all over you know i know it's gonna be crazy it's just yeah. it, it feels weird like when when i was watching the video of the prime minister boris johnson like sort of give the address to say, look, we're, we're locking this down. I was like, I feel like I'm watching like a scene from a movie because yeah. I was watching it on my phone, really enough. And I was like, this is so odd. It never, it's, it's so funny because it won't, it's, it's, this is a really weird comparison, but it's, it's where my brain's at because of why we're chatting right now. It's like when you work on Star Wars, when you're actually in it, it doesn't feel like you're doing it. It feels like a job. And right. it's not until afterwards when you talk about it, you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was, <clears throat> that actually happened. Yeah. That was a part of my life day by day. And then this is sort of a weird analogy, but yeah, it feels like that, that it won't really truly hit home for another few years or like in 10 years when you tell your children about it going yeah the whole world was in the whole world was in lockdown mode yeah it's like we used to fight in the streets over toilet paper it's like i know yeah. i know it was real and they're like please yeah. please yeah. dad come on and you worked on star wars i don't think so nope yeah nope, so. <laughs> yeah what's that yeah. what's that thing yeah so good luck yeah. explaining that one which you had a kid since last we spoke pretty it cool did. yeah my wife my wife respectively pooped out a baby. Yeah, not bad. Uh, not bad. I, could say, I hear you can say that, right? <laughs> I, of course. I mean, I was gonna, so I'm glad you did. I mean, you said it. Yeah. Said it, so it's out there. She's gonna hear. Yeah. She is yeah. Gonna, oh, she. You know what? Just before, just before I came upstairs to chat to you, she went. Uh, I messaged Brian last night actually because I opened up a on Instagram. She goes, I realized that I had a load of messages that I'd never received from him. That you had sent to her Sounds about, about like right. Happy Mother's Day, and she goes, and I felt really, really bad that I had never <laughs> replied, and I didn't want him to think that I, I was ignoring him. So, anyways, she, I think she has replied to you, but she has, yeah, yeah. Um, it was funny. I, she set me up for a great joke because she's like, yeah, I found you. I found this message in some weird other folder. I was like, that's okay. Weird other places is where I feel the most comfortable. So, <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> But no, it's but yeah, good. yeah, had a baby. Well, yeah, he's almost he's ten months in about a week. He's Ooh. ten months old. There you go. Did you give him any pro tips, Tom? Because you've got kids. Were you like, listen, it's yeah. the worst. Yeah, I came out. I was like, here's Uncle Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I've like, waited oh, my God, whole life oh, for this. <laughs> now, come and sit on my my knee, kid, and let me tell you about the world according yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, do you know, actually, because of all this craziness, I, I, Derek and I were just saying the other day that we, you know, we would, obviously, we would normally see lots more of one another. But um, so it's, it's crazy because the next time I see Kit, he's he's going to be, man, Kit could be, do you know, quite, quite seriously, um, Kit could be walking. I mean, Kit's, what, Kit's crawling now, right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, tell me about yeah. it. He's walking and his favorite thing to do is trying to put his finger in the plug socket. There you go. <laughs> One of the great life lessons, really. 
for being honest. I know. <laughs> That's his like favorite thing to do right now. It's like I'm gonna find that plug socket. I'm gonna stick my finger in that, Dad, yeah. and I have to fall around going, like, stop. You will die. Think, like think before you act think but that's hard to tell a nine month old yeah and he's like how do you think i got yeah. here dad this isn't by accident <laughs> this is deliberate as he's sticking his baby finger in the hole. Yeah, this seems like a rather hazardous way to parent your child derek i'm just gonna put that out there because you know that i don't are, let him do it you know that there are, don't... There are little plastic like uh safety caps that you can put over plug sockets so they actually I know. Can't put their fingers in there. Whereas you would prefer to say, hey, listen, I'm going to forego. This child has to learn. And if he has to learn the hard way, if he has to learn 240 volts the hard way, then so then so be it. Don't stick your finger in that. I don't, don't, I don't do let it. him do it. Don't you, you know. stick your finger in that. I do have a serious, I do have a serious like face-to-face -face conversation with him about it going, look, come on, man. Think about what you do before you do it. Like... <laughs> We're here for a good time, not a long time, so yeah. make the best of it. He's like, tell me about it, Dad, and just goes back at it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah baby. yeah. babies are nuts, man. It is absolutely, uh, it's absolutely crazy, crazy times, but um, he's, a, he's a little bit of a legend, and we were, you know, I'm always, when I go to work, I'm always a bit smug, because one guy we work with, or I've worked with continuously in the past, he just had twins. Oh, nice. And, I, you know, when I, when, when Lib was pregnant, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had twins? And now I'm like, no, <laughs> no, like one is enough. One is, one is a lot. And he's, Kit is amazing. My, my son, his name's Kit. He's amazing. He, great, um, he sleeps, like goes to bed about 6.30 at PM at night and he, he'll wake up around 7, 7.30. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He sleeps 12, 13 hours. He, you know he's legend when so we have it really really easy we're really we're really um lucky but there you go. yeah there he's you go. Uh, he's mental yeah he's he's definitely the weird kid I'm I mean, always like stop like don't be the kid that just eats the carpet stop <laughs> stop being the weird kid <laughs> I mean it's kind of our time isn't it you know he could say he grew up during an apocalypse he stuck his fingers in Everything. holes it's like I mean it's not yeah. it's not a bad way to come yeah. up comparatively you know. Yeah, that's like that's like a kind of it's a that's a bit like a Chris Rock story, isn't it? You yeah, know, yep. I grew up in an apocalypse. All we had to eat was carpet. Yeah, you know, <laughs> dad just made me munch <laughs> yeah. carpet. That's you right. Know, that's what we had. Yeah, like, but I'll tell you, my I dad mean, was a king. He had stacks and stacks of toilet paper. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the midst of a shortage, he walked around with no fear. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, that's. I mean, I mean, he won a year to be born though. The year the European uh, Britain leaves Europe. And I know. Freaking world <laughs> lockdowns, like, oh my goodness! Yeah. If it couldn't get worse, you know. Right. He start, he's going to be a yeah. badass yeah. by three. You're like, you're going to have to watch out for him. He's like, listen. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, they're they're going to be a, such a stronger generation for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to overthrow oh, everything yeah. just because, like, we we can rebuild the world now that it's crumbled. You're like, no, 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 no. We're trying to put it back together <laughs> in our image. Yeah. Yes. Be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much been my life in a nutshell for the last ten months is um a baby and then and then uh, slowly getting back to work, which is which is crazy. Sure, not bad, not bad. Tom, how you been? Yeah. Any you more know, kids? You're like no. Hanging in there. <clears throat> no, just the two. That's just my two boys, um, who are gloriously uh, mental as always, um, <clears throat> and um, we're all just kind of we're all just kind of getting to grips with. Uh, yeah, with homeschool, which is, it's great, actually. I mean, it's, 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 it's really great, but you, you know, you realize, well, two things, really. The first is that, that you, you suddenly have uh, a, a newfound, profound respect for the teaching group, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, oh, yeah. and then also, you know, you find yourself grappling with, I mean, our two boys are, are five and nine, so oh, that's quite great. a big gap so then when you're trying to homeschool two kids of, of, of quite a different age gap um yeah you're it's just it's just a, it's balancing it's a balancing act and finding finding ways to um to make it interesting for everyone involved sure um and also i think to uh to remember that that if you try and you know i think if you try and be too rigid in how you do things uh there also lies ruin because um 
uh, because you just you set yourself up to fail really because you just got to be a bit fluid with it and say hey you know we're we're, we're going to do well, you know we might do literacy now or maybe we'll do numeracy maybe we'll just you know chop and change and and, and mess around with it but um but no I mean what we 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 took them out of school we actually we actually felt that the the government here weren't taking things seriously enough sure. so we actually took them out of school at the beginning of last week Smart. so it was the it was the end of last week and the beginning of this week that they officially shut the schools here in the UK um but we actually took them out a week before that so we've had a kind of a week a, a sort of two weeks now of, of homeschooling um and we haven't killed one another yet. Right, yeah, <laughs> it's only been two weeks, though. It's only been two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah, just you, you still got to get to September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Nuts. Yeah. Nuts. I I'm still kind of blown away. I swore it was last year. It's been two years. Two wow. Years. Mm. Man. How have you yeah. been, man? I've been good. I've been good. It's a uh, same sort of thing. Just nuts. Running the race. You know, getting closer. Getting closer, gentlemen. Podcast is going along really good, isn't it? Uh, you've had some really big, you've had some big hitters on there lately. I don't know what is going on. Who's letting me talk? Have you to seen this talk? He had Ahmed Best on. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. Isn't that yeah. fantastic? I know. I know. He's so cool. So all I need to do is get Neil on, and then I can quit all this. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Are you had um uh uh some uh, rebels from Rebels? What's yes, her name? Yes, Vanessa Marshall. She is yes. incredible. And that, it's, it's it's such a weird thing now because I'm like, it, it's at the point now where there's been people who like word of mouth talk about the show who's been on. So they'll tell yeah. their friends and be like, oh, you got to come on the show I just did. It was awesome. So I've been like having that happen, which has been like, so I had a guy named Darren Ross on recently. He was the mm. stunt coordinator for Jedi Fallen Order. And he's also mm. done like apex legends and like a ton of other stuff but he does a lot of like video game motion capture stunt coordination and i was like oh sweet in america in america yeah actually in All right. in la i think and so he i had tj storm on but a few months prior and at the end of that chat tj was like oh you gotta have my friend darren on and i was like okay cool so he talked to darren darren reached out to me and like that's how i got ian white on was because of you guys yeah. So I had you guys uh, on, yeah. and then Ian was like, "Oh, I know these guys totally. Let's go." And I was like, "What? What is? What is going on right now?" Like, yeah. Well, that, that's yeah, how that's going to be, isn't it? That's how you know. It's 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 a, it's a word of mouth thing. I think so, I, and I think that's like the best way to go about it too. You know what I mean? Because it's one thing to like go out on a limb and ask, but then it's such a lottery. You know, it's like I mean, they could say no, which is why I love you guys yeah. so much. Because like, yes, could have said no, but he didn't, so that worked out. Yeah. But yeah. then when it gets That's to like a, essentially words. the way it works in our industry as well. Yeah, I mean, auditioning totally. as a puppeteer is really it doesn't well at least here it's non-existent. Like there there are there are auditions that puppeteers do, but for what for what we do for the work that we do, you get a phone call. Yeah, um, I bet. You know, and it's about you know it literally is word of mouth who you know and, and what you know. Yeah, I mean it's the whole entertainment industry really. So it's been kind of cool mm -hmm. to see after. Good lord, four and a half years now I've been doing this. It's like yeah. it's like starting to do that, and I'm like, whoa! It's like yeah. it's like I kind of planned for this, but I also didn't. And like, I talked to Ahmed Best and Vanessa Marshall. Like, what is? And Vanessa yeah. came on because of the Ahmed show. She had That's listened right. to it and was like, oh, you did the Ahmed show. I was like, there's no way you listened to it. She's like, I did. I still think she's lying, but it's great. <laughs> yeah, so it's been it's been cool. It's been really cool. Lots of people going on. I've I've been doing this new thing where I'll book like two months worth of shows in the span of like a week and a half because stress mm -hmm. is cool. And uh, then I'll just sit on it and I'll be like, what is, I don't like this at all. Cause I'll be, I'll do a show with someone and be like, it'll be out in uh, two and a half months. I'm like not doing that anymore. So I've just been like doubling up on people. So that's been fun, but you know, getting closer, getting close, getting, getting so close. It's going to happen. And, yeah. It'll be cool. And also, and also the acting has been coming along as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Again, I don't, it's, it's like, all these years, they're starting to like show stuff, and I don't know what to do because I've been so used to like putting your head in the ground and just like running the race. And then when you look up and you're like, "Oh, oh, okay. huh," don't think about it. Just keep on going. So it's yeah. Been yeah. Well, they're shooting yeah. the Mandalorian. They shoot the Mandalorian over in the states. Yeah, they do. Yes, yeah. they do. Wink, wink, you wink. You never know, man. I yeah, know. you never know. I, I mean, know. we that's. Here's the thing, like I I said about it on Twitter a bunch of times, like I was really happy with the Mandalorian because 
is the first Star Wars project that we have nothing to do with. Yeah. Um, or knew nothing about. But then, uh, so Disney Disney Plus just launched here the other day. So it was three months after it launched in the U.S. So yeah. by within a month, I already knew what was happening on The Mandalorian because of because of everyone on Twitter. I was like, great. The first, yeah. the first one I was really looking forward to. And I sort of know everything that happens already. And I'm going, great. Well, just feel like I've worked on this show because I know everything that happens and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. can't, you can't win. You can't win. Uh, what a weird way to roll something out. It's like we have the internet, you know. It's going to happen anyway. And so this, far yeah. apart, which is crazy. I yeah. mean, t- to have such a large gap between between the two the two continents. I mean, I know there always is a bit of a gap with movie releases, but to launch a streaming site three months after, I was like, oh man. So yeah. sucked from our end. I bet. Yeah. I bet. It's still pretty good though. But I, I, I as somebody who's like way against spoilers as well, can't imagine. I really feel for you. I feel yeah. for you. It's lame. But hey. It was all out there. It was all out there for everyone to see. But then you know I, I have sort of, Derek will tell you, I don't, uh, spoilers don't bother me. I don't worry about spoilers. Oh, yeah? Genuinely, it makes, honestly, it makes your life a happier place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the way I, I mean, I've always thought about it in, in regards to story, really. Like, I'm interested in story and, uh, you know, we're in the business of telling stories. So, um, absolutely. Uh, you know, so I, I kind of, that's my that's my way of being one step removed from the process you know uh i suppose a little bit like being uh again i couldn't um i can never really get to grips with uh sports fans that take sports so religiously yeah that you know if their team was to lose they they would want to go and you know punch a wall or actually physically go yeah. and punch a wall. <laughs> you know I, I, it's a bit, a bit you know it's a bit like that with me and spoilers i don't you know i think and maybe it's because we work in the industry as well but sure yeah so that's the way I bulletproof myself from it anyway. Um, well, I remember like it was ruined. Uh, Han dying in episode seven was ruined because <laughs> I was really, I worked so hard to not to, I think I've told this story about to you guys. Uh, and Dave Chapman just told me one day, he's like, Oh yeah, the other day they filmed, they filmed for uh, uh, Harrison dying. And I was like, what? Come on. <laughs> You're working like, on you didn't the know movie. That. I was like, <laughs> no. And then you went, went and spoiled it for me. <laughs> well, like, yeah. You remember that? Remember that one? <laughs> so, I was in, well, so I was in a car. I was in a car with a job. We, we, maybe we've told you this story. I was I was in a, uh, a taxi going to the airport with Brian Herring, the puppeteer, mm-hmm. uh, one of the puppeteers who, one of the many the groups of puppeteers. See, I don't know how to refer to it any longer. The BB-18. Yes. The wonderful BB-18. Brian is one of the wonderful BB-18. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he had, this is before we filmed The Last Jedi, and he had read uh, a version of the script. And he, he mentioned that to me. And I said, I said, oh, I said, um, so my first question was, was uh, this is before, this is before um, The Force Awakens had come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, oh, uh, I said, so how, uh, so is, is, how much is Han in it? Oh, no. <laughs> and, and, he did this, and he did this kind of, he did this weird sort of triple, triple take where he kind of went, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, then, um... and then looked away um <laughs> and i went oh oh like this and all these all these sort of dark intrusive thoughts began to kind of present themselves and the next time i spoke to derek i went i went derek i spoke to brian the other day and uh you know i have a feeling i got i don't know i just i've got a feeling that maybe han dies in this one and derek was like yep he does <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, because he, like, he came out. I was like, don't say it. I said, you know, like I had, I had prepared myself mentally for this thing, but then you just came out and you just said it. Yeah. Now I know. Well, well, because, because we went, I went, I know something, and you went, I know something, and I went, I think we, I think we both know the same thing, and we're talking about the same thing, and we went, yeah, and I went about this, and you went, yeah, maybe, and I went about Han dying or whatever, and you were like, I didn't know that, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I think the thing that you knew was that Akbar died. Oh, is that right? And you uh-huh. and you told and then you told me that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know Akbar died. Tit right. for tat. Um, there we go. Yeah. So when episode nine came out, uh, Tom Tom got locked into a room and read the script for episode nine because he was playing yeah. Aftab Akbar. And 
the day that the, the minute he got out, I went, just tell me, just don't hold anything back, Tom. <laughs> I don't, I don't care about spoilers. We both signed a non-disclosure agreement. And he went, do you really want me to tell you everything? I went, just tell me everything. Just and course, everything. And of course, then what I said, Derek, was no, I couldn't possibly do that because that would be unprofessional <laughs> to do that, given that I have just been locked in a room by Lucasfilm and made to read the script. So I couldn't possibly <laughs> tell you anything that we I both, just read. We both signed, in that. We both signed okay. NDAs. <laughs> yeah, mate. That's, well, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Okay? Wink, Essentially, wink, wink. he called me from the room. <laughs> <laughs> You will not believe what just happened in this script. <laughs> you, oh, let me take a picture. Let me yeah, take a picture. you're reading it out yeah. loud. To Actually, him. you couldn't because right? yeah. they took everything. They took everything from you. Hey, and then hey, listen, listen. And then in the end, it didn't matter because John Boyega left his script under a bed in a hotel room. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> I like the idea that after you walk out of the room, Derek comes up, says, "Tell me everything." You're like, "Oh, I can't." Wink, wink. And then someone else, when you walk away, gives Derek like five dollars. And it's like, well done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. all, we yeah. almost got him. He could because yeah, at the yeah, end of the day, yeah. we were getting we get we were getting spoilers left, right, and center. I mean, we yeah. were there <laughs> in Jordan. We filmed the very last scene in Jordan with yeah. with with Daisy and the old woman, and yeah. the old yeah. woman asking her what her name is, and it's like, oh yeah, well that's that's why it's called the Rise of Skywalker. Okay, <laughs> uh, I got that one. So, you know, when you're filming yeah. when you're filming the very last scene of the movie, you sort yeah. of go. <laughs> Yeah. Tell right. me anything you want. Uh, right, I, I right. know it all. That's yeah. so that's so funny. You guys have worked on some crazy stuff in the in the last couple of years. I mean we got so we weren't able to talk about Jurassic World last time, which I loved. There's so much Good. triceratops in that movie. It's my favorite dinosaur. <laughs> And I got robbed in the first one because we only got the one and it was dying. And I was like, oh, it's beautiful, but we only get one. And then in The Lost World, we got a couple of them. And I was like, all right, cool. All right, I'm, I'm down with this. Jurassic Park 3, no Triceratops. What's, come on, come on. But Fallen Kingdom totally made up for it. There was like 17 of them. Did I count in the theater? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I was like, oh, sweet. And there's no, oh, there's a baby. There's two baby. Do I count that as two or do I count that as one? Yeah. We'll do two. Let's do two. Awesome. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. So you had that going on, which that was your first time working on Jurassic Park, Derek? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. How was Because yeah, yeah. Jurassic Park's your jam, and you got to work on yeah. Jurassic Park? Yeah, so that was being shot the same time we were shooting, um, uh, Solo. was it Solo? Solo. Solo. Yeah. So while we were shooting Solo, we were shooting Jurassic. Uh, Neil Scanlon was doing both. Oh, um, sweet. And then Tom got brought onto the team earlier. So there was like a team of like five guys or six guys and Tom was brought onto the team earlier. And I was sort of the, uh, the drop in that would come in and, and then assist on, on bigger scenes like, uh, uh, blue being operated on and the T-Rex. And then a couple of other days, like randomly when they just needed extra guys, uh, for hands and stuff like that. Um, and it was, yeah, I mean, I think the first time I ever walked onto the set was blue in the back of the truck on the operating <laughs> table because that was up on a that was up on a lift because all the puppeteers were underneath. So that truck was jimmied up like you know eight foot, mm. um, oh. and I just was like I just kept hugging, kept hugging, <laughs> hugging blue on the table. What? <laughs> How could you yeah, not? It, was, it got a little uncomfortable. Um... <laughs> And then security had to come, and Derek was escorted off the lot. Yeah. But you um, took your shot, and I respect that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was uh, it was nuts. And then Tom, I wasn't there for the first day of filming, but Tom, Tom was. And w w you said the first day of filming, Tom. Oh yeah, it was great. So we we were shooting um, at um, oh man, where did we shoot uh, Dark Crystal? Um, Oh, Langley. Langley, thank you, Langley. So we were shooting at Langley, which is an old an old factory, which has been converted into a kind of studio space. Um, you know, very, they're very early. Everyone's, you know, first day, it's always, there's always this sort of a bit of jitters around the first day. Everyone's a bit nervy. Sure. Um, you know, we were, <clears throat> that first day we were filming the sequence with Chris Pratt where, uh, which ends up being kind of CCTV footage of him training Blue when she's a baby and the other raptors as well. Right. 
So we, that, that was the sequence that we were due to shoot that week. Um, so, you know, we were kind of, we were laying out our stall, setting up the easy apps, getting all of our, our, our gear ready and all the other different departments were doing the same thing. Um, we were probably, I don't know, maybe half an hour away from unit call or something like that. And sound fired up the PA and we all just stopped and there was this, and and just all just all over this 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 sound stage there were just grown men just quietly weeping yeah. just like oh god i'm working on a jurassic park film yeah like this, you know it was kind of um yeah but yeah it was special it was special um that'll get yeah. you that'll get you ready yeah man get you in the mood. And yeah they used to, i mean the sounds were really key actually uh one of the best examples that I've seen on set of recorded sound being used to elicit responses from actors. So they would they would blast out these incredible kind of, uh, particularly for scenes with the Indoraptor and things like that. They would blast out these amazing sounds. Um, and the T Rex in the back of the van. T -rex, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Like it was, but it was so. You know, they obviously set it up in a way that it, it kind of it was so resonant that it kind of shook your chest. And um, I have no doubt that, that, that. Well, I know because I heard the actors talking about it. They 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 were like, this is amazing because they actually it's like you really feel that there is a, a huge creature present at that point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Sound sound. Yeah. Really good use of sound on that film. That's a genius idea, too, because when you're filming a movie, you're not in a movie. You know, on set, because you have all these different things going on, so that added level of sound effects or music would definitely be like, oh, wow, I'm in a movie. And yet, like, it's like sensory overload as well, but, like, in a good yeah. way. Yeah, and also I think it's, it, it keeps you, it keeps your actor uh, focused and, and in the moment in the scene because, you know, th this, sound might, this, might, this may sound strange, but we've been on lots of productions where, you know, the first AD or someone will... will be responsible for letting the actors know when a sound effect is going to happen and yeah. so they will just be there over the god mic and they will just go raw like this. <laughs> you know and the actors are having to get oh okay there's oh there's a noise happening now there's something going on sure uh you know and then but when you have the actual like t-rex from the 93 yeah. film roaring oh. through a sound studio yeah. it's mental oh yeah. man that's amazing it's so crazy yeah, yeah. I, it was I, really, really successful. I also just love that, like, some because it's always cool when somebody who's working on something is a big fan of that something. So when I heard yeah. that you specifically, Derek, were on Jurassic Park, I was like, ah, it just feels right. Uh -huh. I just love I know, it. It's the one time that I couldn't. Well, I could, I because I always hum and whistle the Jurassic Park theme song all yeah, the time, and everyone gets really annoyed and hates it. <laughs> this is just why we're usually, friends. Oh <laughs> yeah, I'll whistle it at like 9 a.m. and by like 2 p.m. it gets back to me from like one of the grips. I just hear them whistling it and I'm like, wicked! It's made the rounds. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but that's the only movie you can't actually do it on. Oh yeah. Because yeah, people are like, don't don't do that. That's <laughs> annoying. And you're going, oh yeah, because then you then you then you look like the actual geek. Right. You, you look like a nice. So you're going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Keep uh, it together. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Conceal. Don't feel, Derek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was that it was that that very much that out of body experience where you just go if if I could tell ten year old Derek because I was ten when 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 the original one came out mm -hmm. if I could tell ten year old Derek that you know when you're thirty four you'd be shooting Jurassic Park and Star Wars at the same time Sheesh. I mean like how do, how do you even compute that because there were days where I were like you know, me and Tom would drive in and I would go off to Solo and he would go off to Jurassic Park. And then the next day we'd both be on Jurassic Park or the next day after that, we'd both be on Solo. So it was very, it was nuts. It was like, mm -hmm. it was completely bizarre and w a weird sort of realm to be in. And then Tom was also going off to ILM to start to, was, were you doing pre-stuff for ILM yeah, then? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like it was a, there was a crossover, wasn't there? There was definitely yeah. a crossover. Um which was com which was completely uh, uh, happen chance. There was it wasn't like one hand spoke to the other. Um, the fabulous Robin Guyver, amazing, um, who has has a connection with um, uh, Industrial Light and Magic, who were doing the the mocap. Um, yeah, he was who, and he was also 
uh, one of the on-set puppeteers for Fallen Kingdom. He was he was invited over and they needed a second set of hands, so I went over there and and then yeah we did some we did some motion capture stuff for the for the film as well. Um, so, but it was really it was really bizarre because it wasn't like there wasn't like one hand had spoken to the other. You know, we were practically bringing these dinosaurs to life with with these amazing with with Neil's amazing puppets, and then we were going into the mocap studio at ILM and bring them to life as 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 avatars on on screen so uh but 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 it made perfect sense because we that we knew the story we knew what was going on like when the plates came up that we had to match to oftentimes we've been there on the day filming filming those those things so we we understood the integrity of the scene and it, and it, and it really helped sure that's amazing i remember watching the behind the scenes stuff in that and i was like all right you puppeteered dinosaurs, but then you were actually a dinosaur. Kind of <laughs> neat. Kind of neat yeah. when you add it all up. And then I, those things as well. The behind the scenes of Fallen Kingdom specifically was another thing I like super devoured because I remember you. There's like so many clips of just Robin being choked by a dinosaur arm, and then it's like getting his <laughs> pants ripped. And I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Keep on going. Yeah. They really, it was they, really they, quite. It was interesting. They really dined out. They dined out on the on, on the BTS footage, yeah. um, on that uh, uh, more more so than I think we were more so than any of us were prepared for. Really, I mean, we we you know our experience on Star Wars always leads us to think that uh, you know practical puppets are in in regards to behind the scenes footage. Practical puppets are interesting things. They they make they make for good storytelling, you know, for behind sure. the scenes stuff. Um, but I don't think any of us were prepared for just quite how. I mean, they, I mean, in my mind, they they built the entire package of selling Fallen Kingdom around the behind the scenes footage of the practical dinosaurs. I felt. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's pretty good. It's a good movie. Mm. I I really liked it. Like I liked the first one, but man, I love the second one. Mm. It's, just, it's just so cool. Just so cool. Yeah, that yeah. Happened. And we were given a lot of time to like. So Neil in the morning would go. You know, there were days of just rehearsals, and you don't really get a lot of rehearsal time on a movie anyway of that that size. I bet. And so you would get the you would get the storyboards, and then you would then go into the workshop and grab the puppet. You know, if it was the hero arm for the uh, Indoraptor, which was like uh, a puppeteer uh, named Liam Cook would wear it on his chest and was like this five foot arm that had cables extending out. And then there would be three guys that would work the cables for each of the fingers and all of that. And then Liam would have this arm attached to his chest and he would work the, the gross movement of the arm for that shot specifically in the movie where, uh, um, Oh, what's the girl's name? Maisie? What's the girl's Maisie. name? Yeah. Maisie. Um, where she was backing up and essentially she's backing up and this arm sort of comes through the cage and it, it sort of goes to like grab yeah. her, but it doesn't it sort of flicks to her, her hair. So you get the storyboards for just that sequence. And then um, Neil would be like, right, well, just go go into the workshop and, and shoot the storyboards on a, on a GoPro and just let's let's see what we can make work. And so it was such a successful rehearsal process where you, you would know exactly what they wanted from you. Cause usually in a puppet stuff, you're, you're sort of guessing and trying to preempt what they might throw at you, which it is great. But at the same time, it's, it's sometimes detrimental because you can rehearse for two hours trying to prep something that they never, ever going to ask you to do. And so sure. you've worked, you've worked two hours prepping something that you're not really going to shoot. Whereas if you have the storyboards right from the get-go, you're going, well, we know exactly what we want. We know what angle they're going to shoot this at. We Let's let's get all of this and let's try and achieve this as successful as we can. And if they throw anything else at us, we can just deal with it. But we know exactly what they want. And it was a, I think it was a really good, uh, a really successful way of rehearsing because you never really walked onto set sort of on on the ball or on eggshells going okay what are we what are we waiting for what are we prepping for you already knew what you were there to do yeah sure it's almost like stunts when they do like previs where they got the whole thing mm -hmm. kind of figured yeah, out absolutely. which i think in hand in hand worked for the behind the scenes people because there were days where there were just rehearsals and we were just there shooting or rehearsing stuff and they'd be like great well we can come into the workshop and shoot that day because you guys are just rehearsing all of this stuff right right makes sense Makes sense. Yeah. 
Mm. It's, pre- it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And then I know, let's see, what else has happened in the hiatus? Derek, you went to Lucasfilm. <clears throat> we, yeah, we did. So, uh, I yeah, me and Lib, um, we knew... Um, oh, where am I? Um, yeah, me and Lib knew we were going to start to maybe try for a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, and we thought, well, if we're going to try for a baby, then let's let's have one big hoopla. Yeah, one, uh, one last hoorah. So, <laughs> yeah, so we went to San Francisco and Hawaii for two weeks. Dude. Um, and and while we were in San Francisco, I messaged I messaged D uh, um, from the Star Wars show because uh, yeah. we're friends on Twitter. Right and on. I was just like, look, I'm, I'm going to be in San Francisco. And she's like, cool, we're in L.A. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and they were going to L.A. for the, the world premiere of Solo. Right. <laughs> I was like, Perfect. oh, I'm in that movie, but I'm not invited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be at Lucasfilm. Anyway, yeah. so bless her. She was really, really lovely because um, she was like, oh, it's a shame or else we would have you on the Star Wars show. Uh, mm-hmm. But she's like, don't worry, I'll sort you guys out. And she sorted me and Lib out to meet one of the guys, uh, a guy named, ironically, named Lucas, um, uh, who gave us a four-hour private tour of sort of Lucasfilm, of just sort of, in you know, uninterrupted, sort of all doors open. Uh, it was amazing. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was completely bonkers. And uh, yeah, they're really good over there. Yeah, I agree. I was I was lucky enough to have the same experience, and uh, mm-hmm. dude, the thing they don't tell you about it because you think about Lucasfilm and like as the Star Wars fan, you're like, oh cool, it's Star Wars and all that other thing, but like actual map paintings all over the place. The thing that stuck out to me was they have the actual like Captain Hook's hook from Hook mm. in yeah. a dis- in a display all case, and I'm like. Uh, it's real. It's right all, there. I'm just looking at all it. All of those vintage paintings are George Lucas's private collection. Yeah. Insane. That he's he's taking with him when he opens up that big museum in L.A. Yep. Um, but um, all of those are his private collection. And, like, they, they had E.T. wasn't covered. So they have the actual E.T. puppet. What? And you could just walk by it and just touch it. And then after a while, they're like, oh, we should try and cover this up. <laughs> um, they, we have uh, the the reference, the scale reference for the T-Rex from the original 93 movie. Yes. Is it free yep. or a bit lost world? Anyways, Lucas, the guy that was giving us a tour, he was like, actually, they found this in the dumpster. They were going to throw it out. And one guy was like, mm, maybe we should save that. And they just what? sort of took it out of the dumpster and brought it in. And I was like, that's mental. They have oh, Slimer yeah. from Ghostbusters, like wow. the actual. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Head that one of the guys wore for Slimer for all of the plate yeah. shots. So cool. So crazy. I yeah. remember that. They had the uh, the bullets from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Little things. They have little all things. of those old school paintings for like E.T. and all of that. All of the stuff they use for background stuff and everything. Yep. So, Tom, you need to go is what we're saying here. Gee, thanks, guys. I feel, <laughs> I feel really included in this conversation right now. You, know, like you guys, you know, geeking out so good. Uh, over this great experience, which I haven't had. Yeah. But, uh, you know. It overlooks the Golden Gate Bridge, like, because it, it's on this old 1940s <laughs> army base. Go, Dude, no, Tom, I know. Tom, the view was just, well, you had to Terrible. be there. Terrible. Terrible. I had to it give Derek his fun. moment. It doesn't sound fun. I don't want to go. Yeah. Don't make me. You can't make yeah. me. I don't yeah. want to go. I'm just saying, Derek got to work with dinosaurs. You got to be a dinosaur. Therefore, Derek got to go to Lucasfilm. You got to know that it's That's kind true. of nice there. You know? That's it, true. I got, you understand. I got to give you both your moments in the sun, you know? True. It's you all... know, the, the worst part about all of this is that, is that, you know, now that we are living through Armageddon, we yeah. may never fly again. So I may never get to see Lucasfilm. Listen, so Tom, this come may here. be this come may, here. this may be the closest okay. that I get. This might it's be the closest okay. I get to. So actually <laughs> I want to thank you guys because you've taken me on a journey. And uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. picture in your mind, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, picture, picture this scene. That's right. There's a lobby, all right, and you're waiting for someone to come and get you, which is an experience Golden we Gate all Bridge. want, to be honest. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it sounds yeah. like Vanilla Sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, so, did you have you ever noticed that when you uh, in the underground, 
when you get off of uh, off of the tube, as it is known to you guys, Very good. Yeah. Uh, the notes that play are the first two notes of the theme from Hook. Fun fact. Right when you get off, it's just... And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Oh. So, uh... Wow, You're welcome. that's such a random. <laughs> How do you even? Know that? <laughs> I only know this because when I was in London five years ago, every time I got off, I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> nobody, just me. You're in it, just me. Yeah, yeah You're exactly. Using your imagination. You know what I might do? I might break quarantine and just go down to the underground right now. I mean, you just, know what? Just, just to hear that. You will, and you're gonna be like, oh, there you are, Peter. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he don't know. He's yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, little kid, that little kid is my favorite. So, you know them kid hooks got? Give him a chance. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever. Uh, one of the greatest series ever that I miss a lot in this quarantine was The Drive-In. What's going on, guys? I know you're sitting on a treasure oh, trove. Mate. So we Don't lie to me. And there is there is no time like the present. So actually, I it's funny you say that, Brian, because I actually just said to Derek the other day, I was like, yeah. This, this may finally be the time that we can actually edit some more stuff and get it out there. Yes. Um, we are so crap at, we have so much <laughs> material. There's like, we, we have, we have it from when we went to Fort Aventura for solo. What? Um, when we, we went to Fort Aventura Derek, for like, solo, we, like way back, we got it like, from, yeah. we've got, we, do you remember we, we filmed, we filmed like, I don't know, like we filmed like two or three weeks every day. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? We've got, we we've got so much, we've got so much, so much material. We just need to. And we did, we filmed in Jordan. We went to Petra one day. We had a day off in yeah. Petra. We went to Petra yeah. where they filmed Indiana Jones and stuff like that. And so we thought, oh, this is a good, you know, sort of drive in episode we can shoot. Cause obviously, you know, we can't shoot anything on set. Sure. Um, so we, we, we shot, we shot some stuff during and throughout Petra. Um, but yeah, so and so there is technically an episode nine episode. Yeah, uh, nice. but it's yeah. Petra and it has nothing to do with Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is kind of the golden side of it, really. So I'm, yeah. I mean, what else are you guys doing? I'm just saying. Did I have you back on to put you on the spot? Oh, we're Maybe. So crap! At, we're so crap at just putting it out. Well, that's you why you it. have all the toilet paper. It it one hand washes yeah. the other. That's it. Honestly, I mean, I respect you in Savannah and uh, the amount of podcasts, the amount of episodes you guys are <laughs> pumping out there all the time. Yeah. I'm like, when do they do this? Like, yeah. I even yeah. before I had a kid, we just didn't even do it because we couldn't have time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's an undertaking. Yeah, it's well, it's in our contracts. You know what I mean? Like, we yeah. we, we yeah. have to spend X amount of hours together, otherwise the whole thing just falls apart. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, and it got me through when I, um, before I started work this time, I had a, I had about a month or two off and I would cook dinner every night and I would sit, I would stand in my kitchen and I was messaging you guys yeah. and I would pick a different <laughs> episode and I would listen to your podcast while I was cooking food. Not bad. Not bad. Food probably tastes a little different, but Hey, you can't win. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I really liked it. Got me through cooking. Good, good. Glad we could uh, help. I mean, all we do is argue. That's kind of the fun thing. Like, <laughs> we're we're. I mean, honestly, my favorite my favorite episode was listening to Savannah go off on episode nine. Oh, dude, <laughs> <laughs> he did it so much, and it was so funny. <laughs> just listening to her listen rip to into I gotta, it, I gotta listen and I was to like, that. I gotta listen to that. Oh, it's bonkers, yeah, Tom. To, I think it's Dorky Diva, but they do an episode yeah, nine, yeah. and honestly, you can oh. see like. She's about to go and collect all of the phone books she's put in the attic and just go and throw them at the random kids in the neighborhood because yeah. she's oh, yeah. so angry. <laughs> she, getting Savannah mad is like one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, Especially because she, she's so small. Like she's just dynamite. So she has such a temper and it's it's the greatest yeah. thing in the world. Arguing with her is but one of my all-time favorite it. things. <laughs> you flip it and then you watch, listen to her chat about like the Dark Crystal. Oh, and yeah. And she loved it. Adored it. Yeah, we yeah. we considered making an entire Dark Crystal podcast. We're like, let's just make another one that's just called like the Dark Diva or whatever the hell we're gonna call it. Like, let's just do that. <laughs> <laughs> it it was the other side of the coin. She can be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna go watch Dark Crystal. I'm like, no, we have to talk about Episode Nine. We're a Star Wars show. She goes, I don't want to. I'm like, Santa, <laughs> like dragging her. Oh 
Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. So so give me so give me give me give me in in very brief bullet form. Yes. Uh, bu a bullet point presentation. Give me what she didn't like about it. Uh, easy. Everything. <laughs> 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 yes. Set it up. Knock it down. Yes. Very good. Very good. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, and, really and you know, like in fairness, yep. she did make some valid points. True. True. And I'll give her that. And I'm and I worked on the film. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. She, she she made some valid points to some some really good arguments. But you know, at the end of the day, when when you take when you take something as mammoth as 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 that as I mean, Star it was, Wars, yeah, it's gonna be you know people are gonna love it and people are gonna hate it and oh, yeah. everyone this whole this whole fandom in Star Wars community and being like are you a fan aren't you a fan do you it's like who who you can love it you can hate it and you can still love the whole thing as a whole yeah I mean who was I talking to I was yeah. at a convention I was at a convention in Scotland and this um. One of the uh, this guy came up to me and he was like, "Oh, how did you feel about um, episode nine? And I was like, "I thought it was all right." And he and then he 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 was going off on this tangent about how he didn't like it and how Disney are sort of taking away his experience from the original movies. And I said, "You know, in fairness, I said, look, the those original movies are always there. Yeah, nobody's mm. nobody's no one's taking that away from you. If you don't like what they're putting out now." D don't don't watch it watch what you do like i mean don't put yourself mm. through that torture if that's okay not to like something it's that's fine that's not a bad thing that's a good thing it's it's it means you you have your experiences and you have what you like and, what you, and you know what you don't like that's okay man it's it's not it's not a bad thing if 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 every if some people like it and some people hate it it's okay just watch what you want to watch. Yeah, and no it's one's hard. taking that away from you. They're just they're just continuing on, and you can go with them or you don't go with them. No one's forcing it. Yep, yep. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. she gets so worked up. It's the greatest. Yeah, Ooh, really? the, yeah I just felt. I just felt. Yeah, I mean, it's so it's such a good <laughs> listen, Tommy. Honestly, <laughs> oh, okay, great, brilliant. Something. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to. It. I'm looking forward to. It but I will. Uh, in her defense, she does make some valid points. She does. She does. <laughs> I mean, it was. Hey, listen. It was. You know, it was a. It was a crazy thing for us to work on, um, for many reasons. For, for for many many reasons. You know, it was the culmination of of six years worth of, of, of filmmaking, and you know, yeah. we were there at the beginning, and and we were there at the end, and and it was. It's yeah. you know, it's, it's been a huge part of our lives, and you know, we've we've made some lifelong friends as a result of of of, of these films, and. Um, and we feel like a family and, and, and we've all been through it together. It's, it's an extraordinary experience. Um, but then also, you know, we were, you know, we were close to the madness and, and, you know, there were days when you would see, you know, I mean, you know, JJ would like, for instance, when we started to shoot the stuff with Leia yeah. and, you know, J JJ had to get everyone together and say, look, this is, no one's ever tried to do this before. Sure. You know, we're having to we're having to we're having to write the script around, you know, dialogue that's been pre recorded of Carrie from the previous films. Mm -hmm. And now we have this wonderful uh, actress stand in who at times was wearing a prosthetic, uh, a kind of a, a, it was a it was a very strange prosthetic because it kind of it, it would be so she could be shot from over the shoulder. Um, so you'd, so you, you could see her face, her actual face underneath it, but it would come to about here. Um, so that from 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 a three quarter sort of perspective, it would look like Princess Leia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but he was having to say to get everyone together to say, look, you know, not only do we need do you know we need you to be sensitive about the fact that we're shooting this, but also, you know, we have Gilly Lord on set, right? And, and, and she's given her consent for us to do this. She's given her, her, you know her blessing, but at the same time, this is going to be extraordinarily hard for her. To be there and to be to be watching, you know, um, uh, to be, yeah, to, to have to have, you know, the spirit of a mother there embodied on set. It's, that's a really a really tricky thing. Yeah. Um, uh, but then, you know, but then also, you know, you, you you take into account the fact that JJ and all the team that are trying to put this film together have they've got a huge task on their hands. It's not just about 
tying up the loose ends of nine films. It's it's also uh, it, it's also about keeping a certain area of of, of the fandom happy. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Um, so they so in in some ways I think it was a, in some ways I think it was an impossible task. Um, and 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 I'll be honest, I, I, it was it's not my favourite. It's not my favourite. Sure. But um, but I but I think he I think he did a very very good job of 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 an extremely difficult uh, balancing yeah. act of keeping keeping all those plates in the air. I agree. And who, no one's going to do it. You know who better yeah. to do it really than JJ? You know, I mean, you know, he he kicked this all off. You know, however many years ago now, seven eight years ago, and so yeah, it felt like he was the right guy to to finish it as well. Yeah. yeah definitely. I agree. I agree. I dug it. In the episode, you'll hear it's like it. There's complicated things, but in the grand scheme of it, it doesn't matter. But mm. the creature work specifically, and the aliens and stuff, you guys know it's my jam. And episode nine came through. I mean, I was so into everything that we saw and little things, and like I know a lot of you guys now, so I'm like, oh, I'm like guessing. I'm like, I wonder who worked on that. I wonder who this. I was like, mm, yeah, this seems like a Robin Guyver thing, but uh, maybe yeah. not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's do it. But Charlotte? Was it Charlotte? I think maybe. You know, so it's like I'm like yeah. playing. I'm playing that game, and then when the when the credits roll up, and then I see that Tom Wilton is is an Akbar. Yeah. I mean, dude. Yeah. Pretty good. That was, yeah. I mean, that was that was a uh, for me that was a fairly a fairly epic way to to finish up the the trilogy, the new trilogy that we were making. Um, yeah. I remember early doors. You know, Derek and I have said before that you know our experience uh, at the beginning of a Star Wars film is we will go into the work, we'll be invited to go in, and 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 when we're in the workshop, you know, uh, we will start to get a sense of of, of which characters we might be playing um, as we go along, and um, and one of the uh, one of the fabricators, I think, when we were there during that workshop visit, just kind of tapped me on the shoulder and pointed. To one of the Mechies benches, and one of the one of the Mechies uh, had had my my head cast, and then they were building Aftab around around the around this, and and I you know and I had this moment of going, ah, oh, is, is that oh? yeah. Yeah, really really you know, but not knowing for sure, not knowing for definite. Sure. Um. Uh. But yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I consider myself to be very lucky, um, um, and it was it was a great um, it was a great thing to be doing. I really I, I, I consider myself to be very very lucky. It was an extraordinary character to uh, to get to bring to life in many ways. You know, continuing the legacy of Akbar from from the Last Jedi and and previous films. Um, uh, and not only that, it was enormous fun to do as well. Um, and a real team, real team effort as well. Like you know, without predominantly without the fabulous Patrick Comerford, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So um, yeah, real team effort. Uh, the head, the head itself, hands down, the 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 most comfortable uh, animatronic oh. I've ever had to wear, which was amazing. You don't hear um, that often. No, and, <laughs> yeah. and also. Yeah, and also just just in terms of, um, you know, when 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 I saw it on screen as well, I was like, yeah, that's that really that really looked. I mean, like uh, Gustav Hogan who who um, built the mech for it, like it's just it's beautiful. It's it's a work of art. It is Tr- I agree. truly great character, great great character, great legacy, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So yeah, I feel very blessed. That's cool. I, that's also kind of neat that you're like essentially unknowingly assigned these things it's like you just walk by see your head on a desk it's like oh all right not bad yeah yeah That's well, like, De- like Derek, which was which film which film was it that um it didn't happen in the end but you were potentially going to play um uh a gamorian a gamorian guard weren't you what yeah um that was, that was the last jedi wasn't it they were they were they were he was going to be a character in the casino wasn't he yeah, there was, they were going to bring a Gamorrean guard back for one of the movies, and they had me tagged for it, and then it got cut from the script. What? I was to play uh, one, of the, uh, one of the calamari in Rogue One as well. 
yeah. that, that's behind um so I was, I was down to play one of the calamari that's on the radis uh well, well with radis yeah um and then that got cut when i got on to um pow but um yeah I was supposed to play a gamorian guard as well they were suiting it up and everything what i mean from, yeah from a from a calamari to pal pretty good trade yeah, pretty good so trade bad. Not going to lie, I think out of all the new aliens, I think Pal might be my favorite. I'm pretty, he's pretty obviously, cool. obviously aside from Aftab. Yeah, well, right, he's in a category from... in and of itself. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I've got, com- I've got complicated feelings because I grew up and Akbar was one of my all-time favorite aliens. It's like, oh, it's just the coolest, and he just I love the design of it. And then Aftab beautiful it's a beautiful design you're like oh it's a sun and just like you can see like the technology is where it is where it's like it looks real and oh it's just so cool I just love aliens so you guys just, yeah. just, just stop being so awesome and like, and like and brian like you say i mean there was a you know there was a truly wonderful selection of of creatures in the rise of skywalker and i, I you know yeah. big time that was just that was, that was so you know we just kept going in and being like okay and there's, and there's this and there's this and there was there was so much wasn't there oh yeah um, I and, and again also Jordan. and also as I'm sure you've seen from um, from some of the stuff that's been posted online in terms of pictures from the visual dictionary and stuff like that you know there was again there was there, there is always loads of stuff that doesn't get shot on but yeah. I felt like there, I felt like there was I felt like there was a even more so this time there was just an abundance of things that that that, that didn't get shot on um i was in prosthetics for two weeks oh god yeah of course <laughs> oh, no. oh. the picture that, that uh, brian herring posted recently that character um yeah uh, from, yes the, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Warwick. Kajimi. yeah four hours a day get into the chair around 5 a.m you get four hours of makeup Ooh. it's full dentures like full lenses the lenses didn't go in until you were on set and we did shoot some stuff on set, but, um, they have to have like a, an actual auto- optometrist there for your eyes. Cause you don't touch the lenses. You don't put them in. You don't, they, you don't take them out. They do it all for you. Cause they're full. They, they cover your whole eye, right. which means you're then timed on set. So they can only have them in for like two hours at a time. Cause they have to let your eyes breathe. Cause they take all of the, cause they cover your whole eye. So no oxygen gets in. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. And you you wouldn't believe how much power an optometrist has on set. Like it's really? me- <laughs> yeah, because they can they can literally stop filming and say nope they're done. Because usually when you're in a head when you're in an animatronic head, you're just going okay well look we've passed the three hour window, and they'll just sort of go look if you want to get out you're fine you can. Uh, and then as an actor as the guy inside you go no I'm good let's just keep going. They go okay all right if you want to keep going yeah and they'll just keep going. But with when when you're dealing with your eyesight, the optometrist goes, nope, two hours out, and everything has to stop. Ooh. Well, you know, or they turn the camera around, just don't shoot on your character, sure, um, because you're messing with people's eyesights, and they just this the insurance won't cover that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone um, thinks they want to be a director. No, no, no. You want to be an optometrist. That's optometrist. what the real optometrist. power is. <laughs> yeah, onset optometrist. Um, so yeah, you do that for do that for two weeks, and then you watch the movie, and you're like. Oh, it's <laughs> not a movie. But at least it was in the visual dictionary because then there's, yeah. because the artistry, like then, you know, you just feel bad because there are people, they have to, so th- then they rip off. So they have to make two weeks worth of those prosthetics. These, these, these prosthetic, these artists, Lucy Sibick uh, headed up the prosthetic department. Lucy won an Oscar for The Darkest Hour for Churchill. What? Uh, Yes, yeah, and she's lovely. She's amazing. She's engaged to Ari. She's engaged to the. Yay, she's engaged to the um, stunt double for Chewie. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they met. They met on. They met in Jordan, and now they're engaged. They have yeah, a house yeah, together yeah. and everything. Hell um, yeah! So uh, she she was heading up, and and the thing is, is like so her team um, have to um, make two weeks worth of prosthetics because every day they put it on you, they have to then you just rip it off and take it off and throw it out. And then the next day, so you have this amazing artwork that you're, you're quite a a canvas, a walking canvas of artwork. And you just feel really bad because none of their, their work gets seen on an actual cinema screen. It's, it's heartbreaking sometimes. Sure. I bet that's my biggest fear is finally being in it and getting cut. I think you're right, Tom. Like when I was looking at the visual dictionary for this movie specifically, so much. I was like, "Man, look at these beautiful things." I was like, "I don't remember seeing this." Ah, oh, d- nope, this definitely wasn't it. I would have known that. But then they yeah. still <clears throat> packed it full. It's like, yeah. man, yeah. just a yeah. Herculean task that movie for yeah. sure. 
So then did you guys get to work on something together in this one? So yes. in a in a roundabout Uh-oh. way, yes, we in a roundabout way, yes, we did. Okay, we, we that doesn't sound to, like a real way, Tom. <laughs> well, we we got to be we got to be these two creatures of the same alien species, right? Um, who originally appeared on Pasana. Uh, they were, uh, I think, they, they were supposed to be lo- local enforcers. I think, like local kind of enforcers at the at the festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and they we although we did shoot on them i don't think they ever really got featured so so then further down the line they became uh ochi's uh henchmen on on board the ship Uh, and again you you only see them very briefly um in fact i actually to be fair i think you only see derek i think you only see derek briefly on and screen. even then you you have to know what you're looking for in order to see it yeah sure. but um but then but they do appear in the visual dictionary so um yeah so but we called but they they ended up um uh, as has become a thing now and again something that we're very grateful for uh the creatures were named after us yeah um, they were uh, so derek was it derek carno uh and omo omo twilto i i think the two yeah. characters are are called um but but we but we affectionately refer to them on set as um as as tovine and dovine <laughs> <laughs> genuinely <laughs> i love it i love it well i'm glad i'm glad we, oh, we did a... the white snake together Hmm. The white snake. Oh, you guys got to do that one. The white snake. Yeah, the snake this... under the cavern in, in the yeah. cave. I know, but isn't the white? Isn't the white snake? The white snake sounds like something. Uh, I don't know what it sounds like, but it... no, there's a giant snake that was white. <laughs> <laughs> what was it called though? It had it had like a, it had like a name though, didn't it? Even when we were shooting on it, we knew what it was called. Um, oh, you got the name uh... ahead of time for this one. <sighs> Let's, anyway, na- let's name it now. Yes, Derek, <laughs> yes, Derek we, but he's, he's not wrong. We, we, were, uh, we, we were sort of stage uh, underneath one of the lengths. The only two lengths guys substage. It was, it was great. <laughs> Where you belong. <laughs> yeah, because they had to cut holes for us, and then they just filled the whole set with sand. So it was just like whoosh, just sand coming through. Yeah. But it, it did get – it was a crazy three days or four days or five days of shooting – and there were times where me and Tom just looked at each other and went, we are not in the thick of it this time. We are happy just to be here shaking the body. Shaking the body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Much better than that being in an actual red. desert. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not bad. You're moving that up, was guys. One of the first, that was one of the first things we shot on the, the, the – Yeah, I think it was like the first two weeks of shooting for, for creatures. Yeah. Really? Was that. And then the last day of shooting, the very last day of shooting was the Ochi henchman scene with um, Ray's parents inside the ship. Yeah, well, and um, I said to Tom, I said, you know, it's nuts because when we were in Abu Dhabi on episode seven, we were there for the first day of episode seven shooting. Uh, JJ gave a big speech. And then when it came to shooting the Lugga Beast, um, we uh, Simon Pegg was visiting, and we were chatting. Me, Tom, were chatting with Simon inside this tent because they didn't let us do anything for the day until we touched the Lugga Beast. Mm-hmm. And you know, we 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 said, um, you know, this is our first movie that we're working on, Simon. You know, we're pretty nervous. Obviously, you know, it's a it's a big film. And Simon said to us, he goes, well, look, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing something right. And if, if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll get there in the end. You'll make it to the end. And he meant, you know, the end of episode seven. Right. And I thought I said to Thomas, what a roundabout, what a full circle thing. Here we are on the last day, mm. five films in and we're we're here. And I was like, and I just kept thinking about what Simon Pegg said to us on our first day uh, on episode seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I so, love yeah, that. The, the Ochi henchman stuff was the very last day of shooting on episode nine where everyone mm-hmm. said their goodbyes and they did the full rap. Really? Yeah. Well, was that nuts? I mean, it had to have been, right? Like It, it was a bit surreal. Yeah, you just yeah. sort of go, okay, well, you know, we're coming up on rap. Come on, traffic's starting to get heavy on the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's a re- it was a really... Uh, it's anticlimactic because you think it's going to be this this yeah. thing, and obviously it never lives up to what you want it to be in your imagination because yeah. you, you're looking at it through rose tinted glasses, aren't you? Yeah. Um, sure. So it's it's an amazing thing to to uh, think about 
it's like I was saying earlier, when you're living it, you're going, yeah, okay, it's Friday, let's go. Come on. <laughs> right. It's still yeah, work. So, yeah. I'm so tired. Because yeah. you lose perspective. You lose perspective so fast. Um, and then when you do podcasts or you do conventions, you think back and you went, that's such an amazing day to be a part of. I don't, I remember it, but I, you know, you sort of are distant from it. It's two mm-hmm. very different things. Sure. Because then you're also on the day. It's it's just such a different experience working on it versus being a passive viewer of it. You know? Well, yeah, because you're, you're in a completely different mind frame. You're working mm-hmm. on, okay, we, we have to put the heads back on. Okay, we're doing this. Okay, we have to prep for that, that, and that. And then all of a sudden, they're like, great, good. And that's a wrap. And you're going, cool, all right, yeah, see you later. And then you drive home. Right. And then it's four days later, you're like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're not thinking about optometrists. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, the part of your brain that is nostalgic is completely shut off. Yeah, sure. and it's a weird, it's a weird feeling anyway. I mean, I, I hate goodbyes at the best of times, but I, yeah. in particular, I hate last days on set. Um, yeah, because they are, they are, they're just very strange. Um, you know, in some ways, yeah. In some ways, I, I kind of just prefer that, that, that you know, we, we said, right, that's a wrap, and everyone went home, and then obviously you come back together on the wrap party, and you say you say your goodbyes, and you and you celebrate the work that you've done, and and that. But but it's it is it's a it's a it's a strange it's a strange atmosphere, and even yeah. more so on episode nine because yeah, the there end. was this there was this extreme, you know you're, you're looking around at faces uh, uh, you know people that you have shared this experience with the last six years of your life yeah you know it's a long from, all, time. from across from across all different departments you know not just not just the creatures but but across all different departments and um yeah it's it was it was a uh, and, and of course also at the same time you know i remember in the kind of month leading up to the wrap on episode nine there was also this sense of what will happen now yeah i bet will, will star wars stay in the uk um right we, we were aware at that point that the mandalorian was was you know was ramping up and that it wasn't going to be shot in the uk and that they were using stuff that we had already shot on yeah right um, so so you know in some ways in my mind i think i i mentally i went if there's more down the line fantastic mm-hmm. but i'm preparing myself for the fact that this is where my star wars journey comes to an end and if it, and if this is the end of my star wars journey then i'm very grateful i'm very happy and i've had a wonderful time and made some amazing friends and you know had to suffer Derek arnold for six years <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is the you real know, job it's, honestly made which, some great which, enemies. Which, yeah <laughs> if, you know if you really want if you you know yeah so, yeah you guys have so gotten slow, very slow close creeping form of madness just yeah. <laughs> I mean, any, any two people who can survive being in the belly of a Tharoth siren, you're doing all right. I think you guys. I think you guys are meant to last. I'll be honest. Yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then on episode nine, what what all did you guys do in that? Well, oh, um, I mean, your big thing was Aftar, wasn't it? Yeah, that was and that then, was my main that was my main thing. Um, and then we did so we did this yeah we did the snake uh the sand snake stuff um yeah so for me there was the sand snake there were there was this um loading droid type thing which was an extraordinary creation where i was on stilts wearing the body of this kind of uh forklift truck type thing and my head oh. was actually inside a puppet version of a character that Warwick Davies played. Oh, that's um, cool. Uh, so that when I when I moved my head from left to right, so I, I, I essentially there was a there was a cutout section in the belt of this puppet, which I would see through. Mm-hmm. And when I moved my head from left to right, the puppet the puppet's body would move left and right. And then Mike Quinn had some had had the RC had remote control for some animatronics that I think were in the head. And then I and then my hands were up here and I had these little levers which would move the hands like like this of the creature on these like control things. And I was up on silts. It, so it was, it was an extraordinary thing. Um, so that we shot that on the on the rebel base sections. Um, 
then there was all the stuff in Jordan. So we were there. Uh, we were there to be to 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 support with the Aki Aki stuff, mm-hmm. uh, but also we had these two kind of enforcer characters that we played as well. Um, and then there was also the Oracle section, which um, unfortunately I wasn't able to be part of because at that time I uh, went over to Ireland to shoot the um, the Jurassic World short film. Right, uh, uh, that got shot in. Uh, that's been shot in between Fallen Kingdom and the next one. Battle of Little Rock. Um, battle of Little Rock. Or something little Rock. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. The bat. Yeah. Battle. Yeah. Battle of Little. Loved it. Battle of Big Rock. Big Rock. Battle of Little Rock. One big of the rock. rocks. Uh, yeah. There was the battle, and yeah. there was rocks. Rocks. And it was awesome. <clears throat> but then after, then I got back from that, and then we came, then came back and shot all the stuff with Aftab in the in the Y wing. So all oh, the cockpit, cool. stuff, which was just sort of yeah. Get a fire ship. That, yeah, I mean that that was that was oh my goodness, dude. That was like again, like Derek was saying, you know, about ten year old Derek, you know, ten year old Tom, that day sitting there in that co- cockpit was just like I can't believe I, you yeah. know, literally <laughs> doing all the stuff that you see these pilots doing in the Star Wars film, just clicking around random buttons and yeah, you know, holding the joystick and pretending that you're kind of ducking away from laser beams that are hitting the ship, and yeah, it was that was that was kind of crazy, and also. It was um, uh, selfishly. It was a, 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 a great thing for me to finish up the, the shoot like that because in the script version that I read, um, Aftab was originally for that sequence. He was originally on the Falcon in one of the gunning stations. What? So I lost my mind when I read what? that. I absolutely lost my mind. So the Falcon swoops in and. He's hammering away on the guns, you know, and I was like, ah. and then, and then we didn't shoot on it, and it got we were getting close and close <laughs> to the end of the shoot. I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get to be on the Millennium Falcon any longer, you know. I was really, I was, I was so, my heart was like, you know, and yeah. then, then we came in, but I, but I got to be in a Y wing and, and still got to, be in, but so yeah, so that was, that, for, yeah, that was great. You got your own ship. I got my own ship. Oh, own that's ship. so cool. But yeah. Get a fly Derek, ship as an alien. Uh, what did you so so? I didn't do much. I mean, a lot of... <laughs> you're like, did I work on that one? <laughs> I, I mean, we were definitely there. Um, <laughs> but a lot of the stuff that I, I I a lot of the stuff that I was supposed to be featured in was cut out of. So like, uh, well, the first thing we shot on was White Snake. Yeah. yeah. And then we did a month and a bit of rebel based stuff, which was uh Vober Dan just sort of background walking Sweet. around. Mm, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Classic. Um Yeah. yeah we, got, did... we got to have a hug, didn't we? Do you remember we hugged as, as both yeah, Dan That's and, right, and the celebration. So in, in the celebration they, they, scene we <laughs> they place everybody for the celebration because they're doing this big crane shot and they're placing everybody for the celebration shot and going, Okay, so you're gonna be here and here and here and just sort of stick to your groups and I was like, Screw that. <laughs> I'm going I'm going to go, what are they going to do? Call cut and fire me? Yeah. I'm going right to the middle and I'm going to find Tom and I'm going to hug him in my costume. So, <laughs> so they placed me like really far back from like the, the hero section with laugh tab and like Rose and all those guys. Yeah. Cause that's sort of the money shot right there. Sure. And I was like, screw that. Cause I know everyone's going to play their part and do what they're going to do. I was like, I'm going there. Like, no <laughs> Who's going to stop you? Come on. And they didn't. Every take, they didn't really notice because it was just chaos. Everyone was just cheering. And I just went, just beelined it. And then uh, Puppeteer Wim on my, she's like, where are you going? Where are you going? (laughs) (laughs) I know where I'm going. You're just going to keep following me. Just keep the face moving. I'm going. Yeah, like, I'm going to hug my best friend one way or another. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to find him. Derek, you're right. You've turned off your targeting computer. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Did did Voberdam for all the Rebel stuff. And then we went to Jordan, and we did, like, the baby Aki Aki's show. And then we did, when we did, like, a day or two of the Tovine Dovine. um, (laughs) That it was essentially when they... The, the part that we were so may have been seen was when they meet uh, Lando. Right. Um, that we were supposed to be a, a swiping pass, but obviously we didn't make it. And then, um, and then I did another, and then after Jordan was in like November's time. Um, and then uh, we were going to do, I did the two or three weeks of makeup prosthetics that never made it into the film. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so gutted. Uh, cause we got some really lovely shots when we did shoot on it. 
Um, and then, what did we do after that? Did uh, we go? Did we go back and do rebel based stuff again or something? Well, no. After that, after that, there was um, there was Anchorage. So there was uh, Kijimi. That um, was that was the three weeks of prosthetics. So oh, yeah, I was yeah yeah, that's, yeah. yes you. But then after that, it was the Oracle. And then the Oracle, yeah. And then we did the we Oracle. Cut, right, that was that was the the, the section that got cut from the beginning. So there was there was this extraordinary. I I, it's, I, I believe there is some art. It's been stuff. leaked on. It's been leaked online. Has that it? Yeah. Yeah. This I mean, this, this idea was, of this spider and stuff like that. It was absolutely. It bonkers. was just bonkers. They they built this absolute. Well, Derek, you saw. I mean, I. I saw it being created, but I didn't see it on set. Derek, you tell tell Ryan. I don't know. I mean, I know it. I know it's been. I know it's been sort of leaked, but it hasn't been like fully leaked. So I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. right. right. So yeah. Maybe we should. We'll dive in when it's just us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the thing that has been leaked is the name of the oracle, and it does appear in the novelization. There, they do chat about the oracle and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe one day they'll they'll show it, and we can talk about this off off camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's okay. I, I got you official, guys. <laughs> official, there was a there was Bruce a scene. Wilson lips yeah. Sink ships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was an oracle scene, and it got cut from the movie. But and when you when you know where it pl is placed in the movie, yeah, you know why they cut it because yeah. it just killed momentum. It would have you go actually. Yeah. I I fully understand why that edit was made, and that probably was a really hard decision. It would have completely killed the momentum of that one scene exactly. that it was sort of really yeah. pushing to. Uh, which is a shame because you know, in one sense it serves the story, but the other sense is you're going, oh, but nobody gets to see that work. Right, right, mm -hmm. all that time. Uh, especially because a uh, an amazing and an amazing mechie uh, named Steve Wright uh, was instrumental in building a lot of that stuff, and um, he passed away. Yeah, uh, just after episode nine, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. Um, so it would is a sort of nice sort of homage to the stuff that. Uh, what he would have been a part of in in the in the last movie. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. And then that was it. I think that was sort of that was sort of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Not yeah, bad. The, yeah, 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 yeah. That that the Oracle section was in January. Uh, yeah, in the lake. And then, and awesome. then I got back. I got back from Ireland at the end of Jan, and we shot those. And that was really close to the end. We shot that that after have stuff. So then it was February that we shot. Um, the toe bone and toe bone uh ochi yeah the ochi stuff yeah, yeah so the the stuff that we were sort of like well at least i was a bit featured in was just all edited around <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> mm. this is what you get mm. for running in the middle of the scene derek yeah no. <laughs> um, yeah they got you they got you good on that one didn't yeah they? <laughs> well played well played, well well played, played star wars well you win well this round played. yeah <laughs> Oh, I'll see you, you again. <laughs> yeah, you win. You win this round. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a bit of a journey. That was a long shoot for us, and uh, it was. You know, we spent three weeks in Jordan. Um, we were only supposed to be. Well, we were supposed to film for all three weeks, but the last week was sort of shut because they did a rewrite in the last scene of the movie, when Ray is uh, back on uh, Tatooine. Uh -huh. um, which we shot in Jordan. Um, there was supposed to be like a, a whole group of aliens that mm. sort of are there with her and, and everything. And they were just like, nah, that's not going to work. So they sent most of the crew home for the third week. Um, but me and Tom, because they knew us, we stayed for the third week to help them pack up. And uh -huh. we're just <laughs> hauling these massive crates going. And, and a lot of our crew that that couldn't because it was chartered flights right so mm -hmm. they had to be really specific when they sent people home so a lot of the other people that were there in the cfx department were just chilling out in the hotel during the days and going on like uh doom buggy day outs and, <laughs> and me and tom were like we're here lugging these massive crates it's because it was, we was we've been part of the team for the last six years they like you know you can sort of depend on certain people right and the rest of the guys that are like the newbies they just got the days off to go doom bugging and everything like that and we're like <laughs> how did we you end up on this you don't sound bitter in the slightest Eric, about that <laughs> tom you know how much he loves doom buggies those newbies no. 
uh, coming honestly, in and stealing off Jordan. sun lounges. And... <laughs> this is my favorite story of Jordan, and it goes back to the world. Okay, so <laughs> oh god, now I'm scared. The, bi- the biggest thing with Jordan, the biggest thing there was if um, is is it dysentery? No, it's it's when you it's uh, get your <laughs> the no, thing you die from in Oregon Trail. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it's it's, it's like. Like deli belly, it's, it's the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that <laughs> you get food poisoning. You know, it's just a climate. It's just change of climate, right? So on set in 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 Wadi in um where yeah. were we? Wadi Rum. Wadi Rum. Wadi Rum. They, they, there's no toilets there, obviously. So they have to bring out these sort of porta porta potties, but like mm-hmm. movie set porta potties, <laughs> um, which is like one step down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they're just like these shipping containers and you you walk in there's like 10 10 you know toilets and they all have but in that part of the world obviously they they use hoses and bidets and stuff like that right right or bidets or however you say it yeah uh, so usually by mid-afternoon there's about an inch and a half of water on the floor <laughs> and it's 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 crap water you're just going oh my god and you're just going, I don't want to touch the door handles. I don't want to like, because if I touch my face, I'm going to get sick. It's going to be, you know, so, so it's that whole thing you're using, elbows and knees to open up doors. And then you go, you go outside, you rinse your hands. And I had like five bottles of like hand sanitizer, you know, making sure everything's clean. Classic so, Derek. Like it's like a strange foreshadowing of what was to come, isn't it? Genuinely. I was like, I am prepped. So I get there one day. Uh, we get that, and we were getting there early, Brian. There oh. were days we were being picked up from the hotel at two thirty in the morning. Ooh. Yeah, being picked up from a hotel at two thirty in the morning, and you get dropped off at seven p.m. You get four hours sleep, five hours sleep, and you're getting picked up at two thirty in the morning. It was, it was, it was torture. Ooh. So I get there early in the morning, you know. But the, the the flip weird flip side is you get to watch the sunrise in Wadi Rum, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I go over, I open up the port loo the the, to- the 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 toilets, and it's empty. No one's in there. And I'm like, yes. Jackpot. Yeah. Yes, I get to take my morning poo in yeah. peace. <laughs> <laughs> which is all we really want. <laughs> let's let's all face it. This that is... is that... We are going now on this yeah. one. Well, <laughs> we all poo. This is That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. We all poo, and there's nothing better than a comfortable morning poo. He's right. He's Wait, right, Tom. You don't have to deal with anybody. I don't. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, 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 I walk in. I walk in, and it's pristine. It's clean, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Oh. That not all this can't get any better. So, it's clean. No one's in here." Wicked. Time to the defile. Guy, yeah, the, guy, the cleaner had just cleaned it, and I was like, "I was like, when I get out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that guy and I'd be like, hey, man." Well done. Good for you. That was really comfortable. Right? Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, you're going to want to go back in there. Uh, so I I finished up. I walk out, and I, I'm going to say thanks to the dude. And I look at him. And what is he doing? He's wringing the mop out with his hand over the sink. <laughs> bare hands. Wringing the mop out that he's just mopped the floor with. With his bare hands over the sink that I'm about to wash my hands in. <laughs> it literally went from the best morning to worst, like being in hell with with clowns from the 1970s yeah. and being covered in spiders. Like that, that's hell. <laughs> I was like, dude, not cool, man. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's my favorite story from Jordan. <laughs> Ah, see, these are the stuff they don't tell you about living the dream, huh? <laughs> I, 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 Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It really is all about the little things. <laughs> and how yeah. fragile they are in the end. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where's that guy now? Yeah. Uh, he's, yeah. He's still there. Bringing it <laughs> still there ringing out that mop. Like, oh, bringing God. out the mop with his bare hands. It's <laughs> like, come on, man. What are you doing? It's a technique. All right. <laughs> Over the sink. It was like, like there's so many things we need to have a conversation about right now. Uh, oh my hey. god, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> your time in Jordan filling filling Star Wars, and you're like, are you doing the, these yeah. creatures, these aliens, these massive sequences, the ending of an era, and you're like, 
with his yeah. hands. <laughs> I know with his hands, and I have like a really sensitive stomach too. I'm so ignorant when it comes to trying new foods. So I just <laughs> ate rice the whole time. I lost so much weight. I was eating rice and drinking water. I was like, I was one of those typical North American, I'm not trying any new food. <laughs> one of those ignorant, ignorant losers. I was like, try some new food it's probably really good and i was like nope i'm gonna stick with hummus and rice there you go and even hummus <laughs> is pushing it and even hummus. <laughs> oh my god that's, yeah. that's amazing so it, did... was cra- it was crazy though wasn't it like just that that aki aki section uh right. you know i mean there is there is some digital augmentation that obviously ilm have have done to bulk out that scene mm-hmm. but but by and large, what you see on screen is is what was created there in the desert. I mean, it was really this absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, there's so um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Of people. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds. So so Neil had employed the kind of um, uh, the way you know the way you describe it was like that kind of the, the, the way that you portray zombies on screen. Right. So you know the ones that are closest to camera are your heroes. So, you know, they've got the best prosthetic makeup yep. jobs. And then you've got a rope, you've got your, your A A grade zombies, and then you've got your B grade zombies, which are good, but you know, <clears throat> they're not quite good enough to be close enough to camera. And then right at the back, you've got people that aren't even wearing prosthetics, it's just makeup, you know, like right. eyeshadow or whatever. Um and that's that's kind of the system that they use for the Akis. So there was there was three grades of head, the hero animatronic heads, and then there were these foam pull on masks. And then there were these very basic fabric pullover heads that were the ones at the very back. Um, but uh, but in the end, as Derek said, there were there were hundreds and hundreds of people out there in the desert wearing these heads and and dancing along to the choreography that, that Paul Casey created. So it was it was yeah it was Crazy. it was quite something. I mean I mean just and also just being there for the for the boot camp was was just phenomenal. All of these local supporting artists and Jordanian military um, all there in this huge tent with, you know, Paul Casey up on this raised stage with this kind of Britney Spears head mic, you know, <laughs> sort of doing this kind of the Aki Aki workout. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, bonkers. But it created a, a, an incredible spirit as well. Like it really it drew everyone together. Um, uh, and what you see in the final edit is 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 what you get in this extraordinary kind of dancing celebration festival yeah alien craziness it was great that's so cool paul casey another yeah. leg- another legend Ad- yeah. admiral radis yeah mm-hmm. yeah car finale yeah, yeah. it's so cool it's yeah. Long, yeah it's so cool man so then from the experience because you were there on day one there on the last day as far as like the technical side of it did you is it totally different now because you're always on the edge of like creating things or like how is it different from inside the head mm. or was it pretty much like what got, you learned to they, paint yeah i think for me the the biggest technical leap was like um making maz practical for episode nine with Ooh, right a live claire who is the live uh performer so she would stand behind the camera and anything she did uh, Maz would do. Oh, uh, it sen- yeah, it was nuts. It was censored up to her. So she would be all censored up and everything like that. And she would raise her arm and Maz would raise her arm. And then she would tilt her head and Maz would tilt her head. And then you had another puppeteer. Um, who was the other puppeteer? Richard Coombs. Yeah, Richard Coombs, who did Six Eyes. Uh, yeah. Coombs would be doing the face and everything like that with Matt Denton. So Matt Denton and, and Coombs would do the face and the and the, and the, and the lips and the voice. And Claire would do the actual like physical gestures and everything she did, like just a little head tilt or like that or her hands, Maz would do. So technically that was like the biggest advancement. What? Yeah, it was like on set real life. That's yeah, nuts. nuts. Is that Claire Harvey? Yeah. Claire Roy Harvey, yeah. Yeah, another legend. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So, you know, that was the biggest sort of like technological advance. And it, it keeps advancing every time, you know, especially with Rogue One when they did uh the tarkin stuff and the leia stuff yeah you know that you know then continuing on that idea with leia as well i mean that's but that's ilm and those guys and they you know when they when you have the money and you have the ideas you it has to start somewhere yeah Mm -hmm. 
So one, of the biggest, one of the biggest episode nine was was the prosthetics as well, wasn't it, Derek? Yeah, yeah, we hadn't, we hadn't really had prosthetics really, before. Yeah, we hadn't we hadn't sort of embraced uh, as a department. We didn't we hadn't embraced prosthetics in before in the way that that we did on episode nine. And my understanding of that comes from uh, from Neil watching. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's film, *The Shape of Water*. Shape of water. Oh, um, nice. And and just just watching that and saying, hey, listen, we need to we need to explore some of this. On, the on thing the is, is you, can, you can keep a person in prosthetics all day. Right. Yeah. They right. can see where they're going most of the time. You yeah. know, they sure. can eat. They don't need somebody guiding them around. They can do take after take after take after take. You know, you can just keep going. There's no sort of uh, visual or um, audio uh, um, audible impairments you sort of you just put the makeup on you just grin and bear it and uh, you get on with your day whereas the head is just a lot more technical there's a lot more hoops you have to jump through sure there's like a team attached to one of those we've got like four or five people on the one thing whereas a prosthetic it's yeah the dude yeah it's the dude and maybe like two people one from costume and one just makeup person just there touching you up the whole time but um you can just survive longer and do more on on set with prosthetics i mean that's why they do it in star trek right, uh, you, right. You, you, yeah. you know you look at the star trek and it's cheaper you know because it doesn't take five months to build yeah um, <laughs> sure yeah you know you, you don't have to jump through those hoops you just put some makeup on someone's face and they can just shoot a week out and then that's it you get on with it and so it's way economical uh much more economical from a production side right on right on trade-off though isn't it i think i'm not yeah. sure i don't know what i don't know which i'd <laughs> i don't know which kind of foam latex torture i'd go for yeah. uh <laughs> either, 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 either animatronic heads or, or prosthetics um there's a given to take i mean yeah you did the you did the stuff for doctor who didn't you yeah i mean i haven't done i haven't done any i didn't do any prosthetics on on the last star wars film but i but i did some prosthetic work on on doctor who mm -hmm. and it was uh it was hands down the the, the most physically physically challenging i think um uh and uncomfortable sort of work that i've ever had to do sure uh, uh, but then, but then that was a lot to do with the way that these particular things were built. So there was a there was a foam, a, a really solid, hard foam latex out of shell uh, that then sat over our bodies, which then the, the the actual prosthetic was attached to that and then onto our face. So it meant that inside we we it was it was impossible to move. We were incredibly restricted. Um, so uh, yeah. So if you had to choose your poison, you're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've, motion I've, capture yeah. motion capture all the way yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah what <laughs> i hear you i hear you so from a, episode nine were you doing that and dark crystal at the same time dark crystal tail um so dark crystal was finishing off when we started shooting on the white snake which was the first thing we did so there was an overlap of maybe like two or three weeks mm. with dark oh, crystal and the okay. beginning of episode nine that was it i mean um yeah so it was only about a two three week overlap um with with those so it was only about for like two weeks i was running back and forth um between dark crystal and the beginning of episode nine but there's not there wasn't that much when we finished uh when we started on episode nine there wasn't that much shooting creature wise anyway Got yeah. it. Okay. Did you find the Dark Crystal being that it was, like, I guess puppetry has so many different avenues of it, but did you find that it was a different process as far as your side of it? Massively. It's a whole different, as a whole different technique to learn a whole different, it was like starting at the bottom again. I was an assistant because it's all monitor work, which is stuff that we're familiar with. But when it's, hence in puppetry, it's very, very different. Like when you're doing this and but you're feeding completely off a monitor that is reversed. So left is right, right is left. Yeah. And you're hitting eye lines and lip syncing. It's, it's such, it, it is such a hard, uh, technique. It's such a hard craftsmanship. So then you watch these people that literally wrote the book on how to do it. You're just like, Oh my God, you don't fully understand. You think, yeah, just put my hand up there and I could do it. And then you're actually doing it. You're going, why am I leaning? Like, why is that leaning? And you're sort of, <laughs> It is so hard and complicated. So I um, mean, you know, I spent about five, six months on it. Wow. And I, Dave Chapman was the head. He was leading it all up while he was sort of under Kevin Clash. And I just said, look, I just want to assist. I just want to just learn and absorb as much as I can. I don't, you know, and they wouldn't, they would never let me put my hand inside a puppet because yeah. I was never <laughs> this, the, the, where I could. Right. Um, 
So I was just always on assisting and stuff like that. And I'm glad I did it. It was such a learning curve. It was a really hard learning curve. Um, it doesn't, there's not a lot of work out there for Henson stuff. Um, I, you know what? There might be, but I'm so ignorant of it. I don't see it. Um, but I, honestly, it's night and day to what we do. Completely night and day, Jekyll and Hyde. It's, you can't really compare. They're two very different things. Sure. Which, I mean, also, so is motion capture. It's like you guys are doing yeah. so many things, but yeah. you're multifaceted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah the Henson stuff is, is so complicated. Like, watching those guys do the thing, I have so much respect for them because... I just I thought, oh yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah, I'm a puppeteer, and I was like, Ooh. <laughs> nope. Uh, Victor, who who I think was on your show, he wasn't was he? Yeah. amazing. Um, he would do morning slots where you get in at like five thirty in the morning for breakfast, and uh, you could you could go into the practice room with him, and and he would give you sort of like basic tutorials on like, okay, let's let's start from the beginning. This is how you hold the puppet. This is what you do when you know. These are some tricks to make the head turns right you know you always want to you always want to turn the head but tilt it so you get both eyes in camera you don't want to just turn the head because then it's a complete profile and you're only seeing one eye whereas if you slightly tilt it towards the camera a little bit you get the you get the second eye in in shot oh. little things like that like things you do you just wouldn't know and he's like okay this is a walk cycle this is a run cycle right um, but this is the easy way to do that so it's a really um uh you know really great he did that on his own volition he was like well i'm here anyway so if you guys want to do this let's do this and i was like hell yeah yeah you got like a master class That's yeah that so and the cool. rubik's cube he taught me how to do a rubik's cube <laughs> oh it's so awesome yeah. it's so awesome so in yeah. in retrospect having yeah. played so many characters do you do either of you have a favorite is there one that sticks out that you're like oh, that's that's my guy and why is it buford tom <laughs> <laughs> we've done a lot we have done a lot of we a we've lot so, like, i think i counted up i think i've done like 14 or 15 uh, that have made it onto film that's the thing a lot of our characters have never made it onto film that's the shame of it sure um it's like picking a favorite kid you get asked it all the time you um, only have one I, though i have my favorites <laughs> but i think i'll always lean back towards the lug beast yeah yeah. yeah. It was our first time. It was the first thing we ever did together. Yeah. 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 Um, and we spent yeah. the longest on that than we have anything else. Oh, really? Even more than Thala Siren? Six months. Well, we did six months of going in every day prepping that Thala Siren was like, just like, just I think, three days. literally, yeah, we had like two of rehear two days, three days in rehearsal in the workshop to, to, you know, just sit there and figure it all out. And then just a day of shooting, whereas the Lugga Beast was like six months of going in. It was so new and exciting, and then we did two weeks in Abu Dhabi and four, three, four nights shoot on on it. Um, that makes sense. Being so. a part of the whole R and D process mm -hmm. kind of packages it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice sort of way to wrap it around. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, your favorite start. The you know the you know Rogue One was great. Yeah. Episode nine, mm -hmm. you know, doing stuff, you know, doing the puppet sign was really fun. But I mean, when you look back on it, it's like the Lugga Beast was sort of the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something truly, truly kind of special about about everything about those those first first yeah. few weeks on on set out in Abu Dhabi. It was uh, yeah. Generally, because we've aged so much, I don't think I could <laughs> physically do it again. I don't think I could physically step inside the the Lugger Beast again. I don't. Yeah, I'm. I yeah. I'm so old. I'm so yeah, old and broken. You know, like, you know, I was fresh off of the Walking with Dinosaur yeah. tour, where we were. You know literally sprinting with you know a, a 40 kg puppet around an arena so uh, yeah i couldn't i couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> do like a beast now i could I, I don't think i could i don't think i could no. that thing. it's one of the yeah. things it's nice to say you have done yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i hear you i hear you well yeah i've been talking to you guys for a long time so yeah man <laughs> It's great. Uh, we can we can well, we well, we can carry on for hours and hours and hours, you know. We can, but legally we're not allowed to anymore. Pleasure. So, uh, <laughs> but before I let you guys go, where can people find you online? Plug 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 plug. Plug 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 plug. Uh, at Tom K Wilton is my Twitter handle. That's where you'll find me. I don't I don't really have Instagram. Um, I need to get on board with that. So come and come and find me uh, there. Also. Just to plug this as well, please. Um, during this rather kind of crazy time that we're living in, um, I decided that because normally we would 
be helping other people to tell their stories by by making films yeah i can't do that at the moment um but so i thought i would i, th I thought i would do my little bit by telling one of my own stories so on the side i'm a, i'm an aspiring writer what? so i have yes. been i've been yeah i've been telling i've uh, i wrote a, i wrote a story some years ago and i rediscovered it recently and i started to tell it as a bedtime story to my son henry um and i thought you know, it's bringing him a little bit of comfort and it's helping him to transport him out of this slightly uncertain and weird time that we live in. And it occurred to me that if I could record that and put that online, that that might do the same for some other kids. So, uh, so yeah, so that will be, that will be dropping. I'm going to get onto a YouTube page, but that'll be dropping pretty soon. Hell um, yeah. Genius. Yeah, the first chapter of that. I love it. It's check good. it out. Check it out. It's good. Is it the one I, and I started to read? Nope. Oh, he's that, got, that, he's got it's, more. Uh, it's, uh, it's a one for slightly younger kids. So this one uh, is aimed at the kind of middle grade readers. So between oh, nine, I, I and, nine and 12. Kids. So I love yeah. it. I love it. What a great idea. I'm into well, it. Well, I just wanted to, you know, I kind of thought we can't, you know, we're, we're all grounded right now. We yeah. can't, there's that we can't do anything. You're right. So, so, you know, uh, how can we play our part in, in, in this kind of great, collective yeah efforts of, lo of looking after one another you know and it, there's a lot of, you know there's a there's i'm not saying my work is any good but you know there's a lot of there's a lot of time that we're all going to be stuck inside and uh yeah and and also as well i think there's it's it's something to be said about the fact that um i don't know i don't want to get too political but there's there's been some there's been some stuff going on in the uk about how about whether or not self-employed people are are seem to be as respected as people that are totally. paid through a regular salary and um some voices have sort of made this point on twitter and i'm only echoing what they have said which is that while everyone is stuck indoors all of the books that they're reading all of the all of the, all of the content they're watching on on television all the films you know all of that stuff is created by self-employed artists and creatives Absolutely. Who currently <laughs> currently you know uh can't can't work so while we can't work is there something else that we can be doing this is my little contribution it's a small thing but i hope it helps i'm so yeah. into that derek uh i'm on twitter after d arnold yeah. uh i'm on instagram but i won't accept people i don't know it's only <laughs> I put pictures of my son on Instagram and it's a private account. So it's only people I know and family and friends. So I, I won't really accept them. Um, you'll find me on there and they're like, why are you accepting my friend request? It's like, cause that's why uh, you're not part of my family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know you. Ch right. Chat to me on Twitter. I'll chat to, I'll chat to people on Twitter. I, I like Twitter. There you go. Same. And, Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.